So in this paper, I'll be uh, trying to unpack somewhat um, Scouse identity in terms of its political um, and attitudinal uh, consequences for voters. And at its core, this paper is an attempt to challenge this myth, of essentially, that we're not English, uh, we are Scouse. Okay. So as I'm sure uh, most people are aware, Scouse is an identity associated with the city of Liverpool. Uh, the word Scouse itself comes from a shortened form of lobscouse, which was a type of stew eaten by Scandinavian uh, sailors and brought to Liverpool through the city's docks. Um, Alan Crosby argues that the word only gained national recognition and entered common usage uh, due to the BBC sitcom Till Death Do Us Part, which aired between 65 and 75 and featured a socialist from Liverpool and a Cockney Conservative in frequent uh, argument. And in that sense, it could have been live footage from some of my family reunions. Um, historically, Liverpool has held a range of identities, so during the English Civil War it was strongly royalist. Uh, later, significant influxes of Irish uh, migrants gave the city a pretty unique uh, accent and a sectarian identity, uh, which kind of played out as an Irish Catholic versus Lancastrian Protestant divide, although the Protestant identity was also somewhat radicalised by Ulster or Belfast Protestant preachers. So some really interesting dynamics there. Um, as I argued in my doctoral thesis, uh, as sectarianism or religious divides eroded after World War I, uh, a shared Scouse identity did emerge that kind of encompassed any kind of religious differences that did exist in the city. But the identity, importantly, was not politicised. This only occurred during the Thatcher era, uh, with the conflict between the militant council, other elements like the Hillsborough disaster and, and things like that. Um, and what we've seen since then is uh, a new dynamic in the Scouse identity spreading out across Merseyside, a somewhat Scousification of Merseyside, if you will, um, which sees seats that are almost as demographically Tory as you can imagine, becoming pro-Labour and strongly pro-Labour. Uh, as my colleague in the Department of Politics here has said, um, Stuart Wilkesheek, he's argued Merseyside became more Liverpoolianized uh, as his perception of Liverpool politics changed, right? So in the 80s and 90s, Liverpool was otherized, right, by the rest of Merseyside because of negative perceptions of the city uh, and its politics. But after 97, this perception began to change. It became much more positive due to economic regeneration uh, and things like, you know, the capital of culture bid in 2008. So Liverpool was cool again. But beyond this, there's very limited academic literature in examining modern Scouse identity. Uh, typically, it features on Scouse accent uh, and where it can be found, um, rather than a Scouse identity per se. And a lot of histories are focused on, you know, the, the kind of political party politics of Liverpool and tend to make very stereotypical claims about what being Scouse or what being a Scouser means. And so that's a gap that I wanted to, to fill in the literature. So how did I uh, do that? Well, it's first thought that Merseyside is yeah, becoming increasingly Scouse, and we can see this in the fact that in the 2017 general election, 14 constituencies where Labour overperformed, most significantly, uh, had nine in Merseyside. Okay, so there's a, a clear issue to unpick there. Okay, so some questions that I'm interested in. How is Scouseness distributed across Merseyside? Is there some kind of element of a Scouse demos? How does Scouseness compare to other identities in shaping values? And is there any truth to some of these myths around um, around Scouse identity. So I ran a survey with panel base across Merseyside, which uh, as a warning, I only received at one o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. Um, so what you're seeing is 24 hours of furious work and um, probably not enough, uh, not enough sleep. Okay. And as a spoiler, um, here's me basically trolling the Liverpool FC uh, Twitter account to say there's no statistically significant relationship between being Scouse and English. Okay, here's a quick breakdown of, uh, of the data. Um, I won't spend too much time on this because we'll unpick it in, in future slides. Um, but of the panel, um, roughly 57% identified as Scouse, and this was obviously high in Liverpool at 71%, and as low as 14% in, in St. Helens. Uh, we have more women than men in the sample, sample and women are more likely to identify uh, as Scouse the, than men. And this is uh, robust, right? So. We have good p-values. So here is a map, right? If you don't know uh, Merseyside, well, first of all, you're more than welcome to visit. But here we go, two maps. 
one showing each local authority and uh, the percentage that identify as a Scouser, so that's a yes no question. Um, and then the map on the right shows the average value of what I call Scouseness, um, which is a one to seven, uh, one to seven measure, one being not very Scouse, seven being very strongly. So we can see that in Liverpool, it's 5.3. Um, in Knowsley, 4.7, in, in Sefton, 4.3, and then three in the Wirral, and 2.1 in St. Helens. Now, as soon as I put this on Twitter, people on the internet were telling me, oh, well, if you look at Sefton, you know, that's going to be distributed differently between Southport and between Bootle, or, you know, whatever, things like that. And because I have a somewhat unhealthy need to make strangers on the internet like me, uh, I broke this down by district level postcodes, which you can see here. Now, these don't map on perfectly to local authorities, but you can see that basically the closer you are to Liverpool, the more likely you are to feel Scouse. Um, and you can see that Sefton is somewhat of a hybrid. Um, Southport, so that's the very topmost uh, postcode district, is still fairly uh, still fairly Scouse compared to areas in St. Helens or, or to the east of the city and uh, to the Wirral. Okay. So let's look at uh, different levels of scousness across the Merseyside um, and demographics. So this is the first of many uh, regression coefficient plots. And what they show is essentially the estimates for each effect in the regression models that I've run with a 95% confidence interval. And if uh, the horizontal line crosses the dotted line, it means the effect is not statistically significant. So in this case, being to the right of the dotted line shows... Um, a positive effect on Scouse identity and being to the left shows uh, a negative effect, so you feel less Scouse. So we can see that people in Sefton, St. Helens and the Wirral, uh, there's a statistically significant difference in the level of Scouseness they feel, but not in Knowsley, and I think partially tongue-in-cheek that that's because Knowsley isn't really, you know, it's not a real place. It's more a, a collection of areas um, that were bundled together during the 1973 local government uh, reform. It's not actually um, a place with its own sense of identity. And then we also see for the demographic controls that will be throughout this, uh, throughout this study, uh, there's no statistically significant effect, although um, being in the ABC1 class groups nearly gets there, nearly gets there. So let's look at some element of party political um, measures for Scouseness. So I asked individuals to rank parties. Uh, I gave them these eight parties. So a lower rank is better. So in this sense, if it's to the left of the dotted line, uh, it means that it has a lower rank, which is good, right? Um, and unsurprisingly, <laughs> the more Scouse you feel, the lower you rank Labour. So the more, the, the better you, you position Labour. And the higher you rank the Conservatives, or the, the worse, uh, the, the less likely you are to vote for them. What's interesting, I think, is the Socialist Alternative. Um, there were so many different Socialist parties that stand across Merseyside at different times that I just had to pick one. Um, so I chose Socialist Alternative because the name is fairly clear. Uh, is that there is a statistically significant difference. Uh, you know, Scousers do tend to be uh, more likely to, to rank a Socialist candidate higher. But this disappears somewhat when... Well, the effect disappears when you control for, for demographics as well. Uh, we can also look at satisfaction with democracy in Liverpool. And we see no relationship between Scouseness and satisfaction with democracy in Liverpool. Now, it's, it's important to note that this survey was done while uh, the Collar Report was released. And I haven't got round to looking perhaps at how respondents changed before and after the report was released. But either way, we, we see no difference. Um, we see no difference here. More interestingly, right, the more British or European you feel in Merseyside, the more likely you are to be satisfied with democracy in Liverpool. Um, but this doesn't hold when we only ask respondents in Liverpool you know, to whom the question is more uh, relevant. If we include uh, rankings of the Labour, perceptions of Labour within the analysis, uh, we see the same relations present, but also see that the higher you rank Labour, or the better you see Labour, the more likely you are to be satisfied with democracy in Liverpool. So to some extent, these respondents um, are perhaps co conflating the two. We also uh, look at Scouse identity across the Liverpool city region that we kind of plotted out in this maps, uh, so I won't focus on it too much. But here we can look at views on 
combined authority governance, right? Within Liverpool, Liverpool City region, um, I asked individuals, do you think the Liverpool City region is a good idea? Do you think the Liverpool City region with Metro Mayor is a good idea, but my area shouldn't be included in it? Or do you think it's a bad idea and should be abolished? Now, we see a majority in Liverpool in favour of uh, keeping the combined authority and being involved, um, with roughly a fifth being in favour of it, but not being part of it, which would lead to perhaps an interesting renaming, and um, about a fifth thinking it should be abolished. In every other place, uh, apart from Sefton, there is a plurality for being involved, um, but not necessarily for... Um, but no majority, essentially, apart from Sefton, where it's tied between it's a good idea and it's a good idea, but my area should not be in it. And this is just plotted out on this chart here, uh, where we can see that men tend to be, and I don't know why, less supportive of the Liverpool city region, except for within Liverpool, where there's no statistically significant relationship. Um, now, we can see that being in Liverpool does have a statistically significant effect of supporting um, of supporting the Liverpool City region. And we also again see the support for Labour plays a role, right? The lower the rank you give Labour, um, or well, in this sense, the higher the rank. So the worse you evaluate Labour, the less likely you are to support Liverpool City region. So it's a party political decision um, to support it. Uh, we can also look at the relationship between a strength of identity and satisfaction of democracy in the UK. And this is the first time that we see what is a common theme in the data, uh, that Scousness is quite similar to Scottishness and to a lesser extent Welshness, um, in that the more Scouse you feel, the less satisfied you are with democracy in the UK. Um, the same, we see the same relationship for Scottishness and Welshness. What I've done here is the questions that I asked were very similar to the, well, in fact, were exactly the same as the questions asked in the British election study. So we can compare the two. So if we look at Englishness, that's the black lines, um, then we see the, in my, in my survey, um, there's a relationship that the more English you see yourself, the more likely you are to support democracy in the UK. And the same is true for the British election study, but that has obviously very much narrower confidence intervals. Uh, the same is true for Britishness. The more British you feel within my study and the BES, the more likely you are to be uh, satisfied with democracy in the UK. For Europeanness, my survey doesn't find a statistically significant relationship, but the BES does. So I think that's, um, that's quite interesting. And in the rest of this presentation, I will look at the relationship between different types of identities. So the first one is Scouse, not English, uh, not so fast. Here are two graphs. So the one on the left shows the relationship between whether you identify as a Scouser or not, and how English, British or European you rank yourself on a scale of one to seven by local authorities. And the bottom chart is for all authorities, right? So for the full sample. What we can see is that in Liverpool, there is a positive relationship between being a Scouser and identifying as English, as well as British. So the confidence intervals for other, other local authorities are much wider, so we can't say anything really useful about that. So, you know, if someone wants to give me more money to boost samples, that would be, that would be great. Um, and we see this pattern play out again on the chart on the left, which shows the regression coefficient plots uh, for the effect of having a Scouse identity, are you being a Scouser or not, on each of the identities shown here. On average, people who identify as a Scouser are more likely to identify as English um, within Liverpool by nearly a whole point. So on a scale of one to seven, that's pretty, that's pretty good. There's a lesser effect for Britishness, and interestingly, there's no relationship for Europeanness in either model. Um, and so that's kind of two myths that we've busted here. Uh, first is that Scouse and English are incompatible identities. Um, in fact, the opposite is true. People can and do hold both values together. Um, and secondly, the Scousers are somehow more European. This analysis finds it to not be the case, at least compared to those who don't view themselves as Scouse. Uh, I've mapped those identities out here, um, but I won't focus on them too much. I think that's something that I just did really for, for Twitter. We can also see the relationship between identities and uh, different values. So we can look at uh, left-right, authoritarian, libertarian, populist and views on whether equality measures have gone too far. And in all cases here, demographic controls are included. So in terms of, uh, in this case, being to the right of the dotted line uh, means you're more left-wing 
or authoritarian or more populist or more hostile to increasing attempts for equal opportunities. And we've control for demographics. So in terms of the Scouse identity, those who feel more Scouse are more associated with having left-wing values or populist values, but there's no statistically significant relationship for authoritarian or equality views. And this is exactly the same as what we see for Scottishness. Um, in comparison for Englishness, we see the same results in my survey and the British election study. Increased English identity is associated with being more right-wing, more authoritarian, more populist and more anti-equality uh, to those who have a lower level of Englishness. Britishness is also associated with, uh, with some of these uh, as well. My survey again sees uh, Europeanness just narrowly missing out on statistical significance, um, but we do see those who feel more European in the BES, um, across my survey and the BES, are less authoritarian, so more libertarian, uh, less populist and more in favour of equality measures. And finally for Welshness, only authoritarianism is statistically significant here. Um, and the rest aren't. Uh, we can do the same type of measure of identity through looking at uh, Moreno or Moreno, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, scale and values. And that essentially asks people if they feel, say, only British, more British than Scouse, equally British and Scouse, more Scouse than British, or only Scouse. And this is useful because it makes respondents choose. So in this case, um, We've plotted this out as a, as a scale from five being only British, uh, so as one being only British and five being only either Scouse, English or Welsh, whatever. And what we see is that moving away from being only British to being only Scouse, uh, you know, you, voters are more, um, more left-wing and more populist than those who identify as British within my sample. Uh, amongst the English from the BES, we see those who identify as English rather than only British um, are more right-wing, are more authoritarian and more hostile to equality measures. We see no relationship for the Welsh measure, but for Scottish, um, we see left-right, so they're more left-wing, they're more libertarian, and they're more prone to support equality measures. Sadly, the BES didn't ask about populism for this wave that I'm using for, for this one. Um, we also see those who are more Scouse compared to being only English are also more left-wing, are also more populist, are more libertarian and more prone to supporting equality. So Scouseness can be seen, unsurprisingly, as a left-wing populist identity compared to Britishness and Englishness. In the final part of this presentation, I just want to look at some myths about Liverpool, and I don't have time to go into all of them here, uh, worth the time. What I do think is that there's some interesting ones here. Um, one that strikes me as someone who could not care less about football is that um, on average, Scousers and non-Scousers think that real Scousers have to be football fans, which I find strange. Um, you can see the success of the Sun boycott in, in Merseyside and that Scousers think that real Scousers should not buy the Sun newspaper. They should, not vote, uh, they, should, they should vote Labour and they should not vote Conservative. We can break this down by local authority, which I've done here. Um, and again, I won't go into this too much, but we can see what's quite interesting is that if you ask people, real Scousers want to live in Liverpool, not somewhere else. Well, there's pretty much a majority, well, the average value is in agreement with this across all boroughs um, and Scousers think this in all cases. So there are Scousers who don't live in Liverpool, but who think that real Scousers should live in Liverpool. Um, and what's even more cognitively dissident, I guess, um, is that if you break this down by party politics, you have uh, conservative voters or people who rank the conservatives as their number one, um, who see themselves as a Scouser, think that real Scousers should not vote conservative um, and that real Scousers should vote Labour. And so I think, well, I think that's just really, um, really interesting, to be honest, is that there's this element of almost you know, you, you like the Conservative Party, but perhaps they actually vote Labour because they feel like they have to, or they just are happy to have this um, incompatibility in their head, operating like that. Uh, finally, here's a distribution of party rankings by whether you consider yourself a Scouser or not. And the only real difference here is for Conservatives and Labour. So we can see that Labour, Scouse, Scousers are much more likely to rank Labour higher than, um, than non-Scousers and they're more likely to rank the Conservatives lower than 
non-scousers and the distribution of the conservative ranking is you've got some people who rank them quite low and some people who rank them quite high which i think is interesting um, i also really like this liberal plot here it just looks really it looks like something's gone wrong um, and the socialist alternative plot looks a little bit like my body shape after lockdown and then finally uh, just scouseness and left right placement once again more confirmation that scouseness leads to people uh, being more left wing and Englishness and Britishness lead to people being more right wing. Uh, and then Europeanness, Scottishness and Welshness are also also see people being more uh, left wing. So very quickly, just to conclude, um, the myth of Scouse not English doesn't hold up, nor does the idea that Scousers are somewhat more European than non Scousers. There's lukewarm support in Liverpool for the Liverpool city region and weak support outside of Liverpool, primarily driven by party identification. And there's some mileage in studying local democracy, uh, local identities in terms of local democracy, because it does affect party choice, it does affect values, and it's something I'd like to uh, continue doing. So if anybody has any suggestions about what I could do with the data, how to present it, uh, suggestions for future research, please do, uh, please do get in touch. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much.